Hi friends, Bill Hobson here, and one of my goals at the beginning of every program is to sort of lay the groundwork to tease you with where we are for our feature destination. So here's your hint for today. I've worn my maize and blue shoes fresh out of the box. Now why would that be? Maize and blue, maize and blue. We'll explain, stick around. Welcome to Michigan Golf Live Television, shining the spotlight on the best places to play, stay, and celebrate the greatest game on earth. Stay connected to Michigan Golf Live 24-7 on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. And subscribe for free to our weekly For Golfers Network podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere podcasts are found. Here's your host for MGL-TV, Bill Hobson. Hello, friends, and welcome into the show. I'm Bill Hobson, and man, do we have a great treat in store for everybody because today we are bringing together the perfect combination of golf, of an eclectic city that is one of the most popular in America where you can enjoy some incredible food, have a great deal of fun, and make the kind of memories that last you forever. If you like a walkable, shoppable, enjoyable downtown area, this is the one. And if you know where we are by seeing that sign over my shoulder, you'll know that there are only two references to the Ark in my world. One is in the Old Testament, and the other is in downtown Ann Arbor. As we have come today to discover Ann Arbor with all of you on and off the course. I love it when the story of a golf course intermeshes with the story of the destination we're featuring, in this case, Ann Arbor. And Leslie Park Golf Course is part of Ann Arbor. It's a municipal course, and Andrew Walton knows it better than most. He's the general manager. What is it that, that's special about Leslie Park? Um, Bill, it's, uh, it's just a great place to, to work. Obviously, I've had the privilege of, of being here for 15 years, um, growing up in the area, playing the golf course a lot. It's just a, it's a fun place to be, uh, a great challenge, something that um, I get to see every day with golfers coming in here and enjoying our facility. It's uh, just a great place to call home. And Leslie Park has some history to it. I mean, there's a story to tell about this construction from Packard way back in the day, right? Yeah, uh, built in uh, 1967 by Lawrence Packard. Um, in the mid 90s, uh, Art Hills came in and did a pretty significant renovation where we were closed for a full season. Uh, worked on a lot of kind of the, the problem areas that that weren't holding up to the modern game as much. It's in great shape, always. A lot of fun to play. Just a real gem. I think one of the surprises to a lot of our viewers might be the general topography of Leslie Park. There's a lot of elevation. There's a lot of strategy involved. It's not just grab the driver and hit bombs away. You, you've got to put your ball in the right spot, both in the fairway and on these greens, because these greens can be pretty severe. Yeah, definitely. The, the north side of Ann Arbor in general is really hilly. Um, these greens, as you mentioned, there's a lot of slope to them. Uh, you've got to be in the right spot off the tee to be able to put yourself in the right spot around the green. you got to be below the hole. You have that challenge of maintaining really, really top-notch conditions while still remaining a, a value for golfers. And it seems like you've walked that delicate balance really well here. Everything is just really pristine. I appreciate that, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of that credit goes to our, our maintenance staff and our whole team. But it's something we're really proud of. One of my favorite parts about life at a municipal course is that you always come in contact with some characters, some people who know the whole story and are ready to tell you. Mike McGovern, <laughs> character extraordinaire. Uh, what is it about Leslie Park that makes you so thrilled to be kind of the ambassador as people come and greet you in the clubhouse? Um, I think it's one of the best golf courses in the area. Um, we've got a fantastic superintendent. Um, the managers here are unbelievable. It's almost like being at a country club at a municipal course. We were voted as the best public course in the state of Michigan by Golf Digest back in 2009. Uh, that didn't come easy. The conditions of our course are fabulous and we bend over backwards with customer service to make everybody feel at home. And if you come to Leslie Park, you get to meet a character and his name is Mike. <laughs> Tell him we sent you. <laughs> Part of telling the story of Ann Arbor off the golf course brings us downtown where the vibe is just, it's just super cool. 
and one of the aspects or components of that cool vibe brings us inside an authentic Irish pub. This is Connor O'Neill's. This isn't Connor himself, this is Brendan Murray. What a cool place you have here. Thank you very much. What makes it special? What makes it part of the vibe of downtown? Uh, you know, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary. Um, everything in the pub, from the bar tops to the stone down here, uh, was built in Ireland or came over from Ireland and assembled here by a lot of Irish tradesmen. Um, but what makes a pub is the people. And when they come in for a bite to eat, what's the most popular menu item? Fish and chips. I would think so. Yep. Every day, every day of the year, fish and chips is number one. Shepherd's pie is a close second. And then we have a couple cool appetizers and uh, shareables that people really enjoy. But what's it like when this place gets cranked up? When this place is rocking, it is a blast. Um, we fit several hundred people um, for all kinds of different events. St. Patrick's Day, Michigan football Saturdays, Premier League soccer games, or just baptisms, uh, birthday party. The international flavor of Ann Arbor is well known really all around the world. How about the international flavor of having this Irish pub in town? What's it kind of bring to the culture? Well, that's the beauty of having an Irish pub in a town like Ann Arbor is just about every place you go in the, in the world, you can step off a plane and find an Irish pub pretty easily. So pubs become kind of a beacon for people that are traveling internationally. Uh, it's always a safe bet that you can have a good time at an Irish pub. Uh, whether somebody's finishing up a round and they want some AC blasting, cool them off a little bit, or they want to continue the party outside on the, on the patio, uh, we get tons and tons of golfers that come in after their rounds. After that incredible authentic dinner at Connor O'Neill's, we need to cleanse the palate a little bit. So we stayed downtown, walked a block or two over to another Ann Arbor institution. This is the Blank Slate Creamery, where they hand make all their ice cream right in house. I'd love to share this with you, but frankly, I don't really have enough. So come get your own at some point when you're in downtown Ann Arbor. We'll take a break, and when we return, we are heading back to the golf course as we continue our time discovering Ann Arbor together. Hey, welcome back into the show as we celebrate golf and fun in Ann Arbor. Obviously right now we're not on the golf course because I want to take a moment to introduce to you what for many will be a brand new activity for those days when you're not on the course. It's called foaling. Bowling, the combination of bowling and football. Who would have thought? The concept is simple, the execution is not. You and your teammates will be on this end, your opponents will be on that end, with the goal of being the first to knock down all 10 actual authentic bowling pins first. So before we go back to the golf course, let's have a little fun foaling. It is nowhere near as easy as it looks. Foaling is a game that is easy to play, easy to conceive, but very difficult to master. Much like a game you might be familiar with. Um, so you come and you play it and you have a great time playing it. You love knocking down the first nine pins and then realize how difficult it is to get the last 10 pins. If you got four people and you're looking for something to do and it's raining outside, you know, come on in. So you've been playing golf all day and I know without a doubt, that at least one of the guys in your group is that guy who's been telling you all day what a great high school quarterback he was. His arm was golden. And if it wasn't for whatever excuse, he was going to the big time. Hypothetically, let's just call that guy Steve, for lack of a different name. Oh, and what do you know? Here's Steve now. All right, hot shot. Let's see what he's got. just a bit outside. Foaling is harder than it looks, my friends. Come try it for yourself when you're in Ann Arbor. And now let's head back to the golf course as we go over to Eastern Michigan University, just a couple of minutes from this foaling warehouse and introduce you to Eagle Crest. Everybody knows the major university located in Ann Arbor. And you also know that the neighboring city right next door is Ypsilanti, the home of Eastern Michigan University. For those of you who are diehard golfers, and I'm thinking that might be everybody since you're watching a golf show, you know that a trip to Eastern means a tee time at Eagle Crest, and Wes Blevins is the boss in these here parts. 
I love this course on the banks of Ford Lake and uh, you have had a chance to see it grow and mature over the years to one of America's best public university courses, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? We uh, currently are number 13 in the country ranked by Golfer's Choice for public university golf courses. How do you describe Eagle Crest to a new visitor? It's a golf course that you really need to come and play. It's right on Ford Lake. Uh, it's very challenging and it's very picturesque. Start us on 14, that par three that comes down and takes your eyes right out to the lake. It does. It's a challenging par three from an elevated tee shot. It's a two-tiered green, and it's, uh, it's something that we're gonna have a lot of fun playing today. Number 15 can kind of fool the eye a little bit if you're down low enough on the tee box because you may not realize that there's some water up there on the left. There's water left from the pond, and then there's also water to the right, which is Ford Lake. It's, it's the most demanding tee shot on the golf course. As we tee it up on 16, I think it's one of the most picturesque holes anywhere in the state of Michigan, but it also has a little bit of challenge to it. You better keep your tee shot left and be very accurate with your approach. Yes, it's, uh, it's a risk reward par five. It's our signature hole to a peninsula green. And you just, uh, you know, depending on how you hit it off the tee, you can go for the green or just play it safe and lay up and, and try to wedge it on and, and make a birdie that way. On 17, you have this beautiful, innocent looking par three, yeah. unless you tend to drift to the right a little bit, in which case you're gonna have an adventure. You are. And maybe a penalty. You got a pond on the right-hand side with a, a very deep bunker as well. You wanna favor the left-hand side and, and cut it in or take it at the middle of the green and, and hit a draw. So 18 brings us back up the hill toward the hotel, toward the clubhouse, a really cool finishing hole, yeah. not necessarily overly long, but one that plays uphill enough that it'll, it'll give you a, a firm test to finish out. It's uh, one of the shorter holes here. The challenge is the green. It's the two-tiered green. Today when we play, the, the pin will be in the second tier in the back. So you got to get it up the ridge. And then from there, it's not an easy two-putt because it's one of the most challenging greens on the golf course. Okay, so we've talked a bit about what is. It's part of the excitement and some of the visuals that everybody's been able to soak in while we've been talking, that they can tell there's some construction taking place. So we know what is, what is to come? What is to come is, is being built right now. From EMU Athletics, we have a performance center. It's called the Game Above Performance Center. And it's for the men's and women's um, golf teams. So that's gonna be their new home. Nice. And for us, we put an addition onto the clubhouse. And when he says for us, he means all of us. Yes. It's open to the public. Yes, it's open to the public. Eagle Crest is putting a 2,200 square foot addition onto the clubhouse, which will host four TrackMan simulators. So we will be open year round and we'll run tee times, instruction, and leagues all winter long. And one of the reasons I'm so excited to be here at Eagle Crest is because it is open to the public. One of the great university courses in America and part of this incredible Discover Ann Arbor experience you all can have when you come down to play, have some fun, eat too much food, and play a lot of golf. Wes, thank you. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Our next featured course keeps us in Ypsilanti. Just a few minutes over from Eagle Crest, we come to the historic Washtenaw Golf Club. And don't let the name fool you, it is open to the public. You can come and play this beauty that dates back to 1899. And I have the pleasure of connecting with my friend, Michigan Golf Hall of Famer, Dave Kendall. How are you, sir? Just great, Bill. Such a beautiful place you have here and the history which you're trying to kind of get back to in some touch-ups to the golf course. The history is just throughout this entire property, isn't it? It really is, it really is. And I've uh, tried to study it and kind of go back in history. And we have a member here who has documents from back to 1899 and has shared that with us and we can go through it. And we haven't gotten all through it yet, but it's, it, it, it's really going to be quite a thing to be able to look at its history. And then Ray Heron is quite a historian. He's been doing work for us and has guided us through some restoration things, and uh, that's been just wonderful. How do you describe Washtenaw Golf Club to those who haven't played it yet? You know, it has this character that, you know, you're playing different shots all the time. You have, you're gonna hit every club in your bag. It's, uh, it's got difficult rolling greens at times, and uh, you know, it's got terrain. You've got some uphill, you got some downhill. 
you've got some side hill. <laughs> you've got some wetlands. You've got a little you, bit of everything. You really do. And so, you know, I love every minute I'm here. One of my favorite aspects of great golf course architecture, in this case dating back to well over a century, is a hole that gives you options. And number eight here at Washtenaw is one that we've got to talk about for a couple of seconds because <laughs> there are a million options off the tee. And then when you get to the green, your challenge is just getting started. So take us tee to green through number eight. You really have to think about it. It depends on where the tees are, where the wind is. You kind of got to calculate that. The real long hitters, they'll try and knock it on. Of course, there's a price for that. If you don't hit a real good one, you might end up you know, where you're dead. In some rough spots. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I'd say the hole gives you, you know, if you can hit a straight shot with about anything, you can get a short club to the green. You know, so if you play a little conservative off the tee, you can get yourself a short iron, but then you've got to hit in the right part of the green, you know, depending about where the pin is. You know, because if you don't hit it onto that quadrant, the ball will roll to a place where it's very difficult to two putt. And every aspect of the experience at Washtenaw Golf Club is rich with character and history. The trees date back to maybe 1899 in some cases. <laughs> and this is a place that you have got to play a few times to get a feel for. And I absolutely love that it's part of our Ann Arbor showcase because your experience and your visit to Ann Arbor won't be complete unless you come play at Washtenaw Golf Club. And if you're struggling a bit, just ask this guy for a lesson. He's in the Hall of Fame, for goodness sakes. Dave, thanks so much. Thanks so much. It's so great of you to come and visit Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti area, and it's a treat to have you. Welcome back into our final few moments of fun here in Ann Arbor as we celebrate golf and life in this awesome city. I wish we had time to showcase every reason you should visit Ann Arbor, but time doesn't allow for that. However, I would be guilty of host malpractice if I didn't make sure that before time ran out, we didn't bring you in to the iconic place known as Zingerman's Deli. Because when you walk into Zingerman's, you walk into authenticity, a building built in 1902 with heritage and a national reach, by the way. Oh, and it doesn't hurt that everything in here is really, really good. In fact, I need to take some home with me. Hi there. Hi. Uh, I need to take home a pound of cheddar, a whole lot of bacon and ham, okay. and um, about some Munster as well. Of course. To truly appreciate the story of Zingerman's, you've got to meet somebody who's been here from the ground floor. So Ari, what is the magic of Zingerman's? There's some magic to it. I don't know that there's any magic. I think it's actually just good work and getting good people in a good place and doing what we need to do. Uh, I think it's magic that every human has inside of them, to be honest with you, and that anybody could create. But most people are used to working in ways that sort of leave the magic out. And we're just trying to bring out what my belief is is, is already present in everybody. And to be able to make great food and make a great place for people to work. and hopefully provide great service for people like you when they come in and sort of seems to be working for 41 years. I'd say that's a pretty good run. And you have hundreds of thousands of visitors who come through these doors and the other Zingerman's doors for yeah. the first time ever. Yeah. Wide-eyed and, and kind of stepping back in time somewhat to when the deli used to be a face-to-face -face interaction. How hard has it been to maintain Kind of that level of authenticity. Like authentic is just how we're born. It's it's actually that we unlearn it and as we're raised and start to get bombarded with pressure to conform from other people. So I think authenticity follows from that. I mean, Did you ever think when you were first getting started? No. That a Ru that a Reuben would be popular on the other side of the world. Every day from the day we opened, March 15th, 1982, until today, and for as many more decades as we're in business, which I hope is a lot, we're just going to keep trying to make everything better. And, you know, when there's only one and it's really special, then it creates an impression and an experience that people want to come back for and that they, they want to talk about. You didn't really think I was going to sit here at Zingerman's all this time and not get a sandwich, right? I mean, look at this turkey sandwich just waiting for me. 
Now, so I'm gonna dig into this, and then on the other side of this, we have one more golf course remaining as we showcase golf and life in Ann Arbor. Our final stop takes us over to Stonebridge Golf Club. There are not many people who know the Stonebridge course layout better than Mike Arity, who is the PGA teaching professional here, and he can help get your game in shape, so that's kind of nice. Uh, describe Stonebridge for people who have not played it. You know, Stonebridge is a private country club uh, feel um, and just a, a wonderful layout. Um, all different types of shots that you have to hit here. Um, and you better bring your short game because the, the putting greens are really tough here. And I want to make sure we differentiate between private club feel because it's not a private club. It's, all, it's open to all of you to come and play Absolutely. at any time. Stonebridge is open to the public, but it has the conditioning and kind of that feel of a private club being in this very nice neighborhood. Absolutely. Well, what's really nice about Stonebridge is you have room to drive the golf ball. So you can hit your driver on most of the holes. Um, and then your second shots require pinpoint accuracy. Greens that are tend to be a little narrow but undulating. A beautiful layout and a fun layout to play for any level of golfer. We started on hole number three and it's, you know, driver right away for all you're worth because it just so happens we're here on a very windy day and it was a little longer than you might think. And as you make your way through the rest of that front nine, you realize a couple of things. Just because there are uh, residences around the holes doesn't take away from the golf. You really almost don't even see the houses when you're playing the golf course. There's plenty of room to hit the golf ball. You've been around this Ann Arbor area for quite a while. You have a maize and blue golf bag and uh, so you know what golf is like in this region. As a destination, how do you think the Ann Arbor area holds up just from a golf standpoint? There's probably 10 to 12 golf courses that you can play in this area and stay and have a, a great time playing golf. Doug Mervis is the general manager here. This is home for you. What's special right. about Stonebridge as a golf club? Well, I mean, it's an Arthur Hills course, which uh, makes it a really nice high-end course. Um, we got rated top 10 in the free press last summer uh, for Metro Detroit, top 10 public courses. And um, so it's a great place, fast greens, uh, destination play for about an hour away. Um, we get lots of play and it's just a quality, quality track. One of the things I've always appreciated about the legendary Arthur Hills design characteristics is the way that he kind of helps keep your tee shots in play. He's got some creative mounding. Right. Not that it's easy, right. but he, he's, a, he's got a forgiving mindset most of the time. But yeah, you're right. It is a forgiving course, especially after the first time you play it. This is a pretty solid destination, this Ann Arbor area. It is, and I'll tell you what's starting to happen, because we get a lot of people from Ohio, Indiana, um, they love Ann Arbor, just the town, because yeah. the town is is like really uh, a destination in itself now for the restaurants and the university. So, and then you've got these great courses here to boot, and you've got lots of hotels. So we're getting a lot of people saying, hey, we're gonna come and spend the night in Ann Arbor, and we're gonna play two or three courses, and there's so many good courses here, it's unbelievable. When you think about, the, I mean, really good courses. Well, yeah. we, we've been telling you folks for years, those of you <laughs> who are in Ohio, Indiana, right. Illinois, and surrounding states, that you gotta get to Pure Michigan. You gotta get to Pure Michigan. There's yeah. a reason why, and now you need to come to the Ann Arbor area. That's right. Thank you for being Thank part you. of I our feature it. of Golf, Life, and Fun in yeah. Ann Arbor. This hey, place is beautiful. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you. We've got just a couple of moments left during our time here in Ann Arbor, and so I want to welcome in the president of Destination Ann Arbor, Sarah Miller. We've seen a lot of golf. We've had way too much really good food and had a great deal of fun. But all of this can be kind of overwhelming for a, somebody who's going to plan a trip here. So how does your team help with all that? Yeah, that's a great question. With all the food you've seen, you can see what, what challenges present itself or where do we have, what do we have for dinner? So um, annarbor.org um, is a great place to check it all out. Take your time. You're going to need it to look through all those great restaurants. We can help you plan anything you want. Our art and culture scene is really incredible. We have a ton of museums. Nightlife is so much fun. Um, it's not just a sporting destination. I have a feeling we could have spent a couple hours in a documentary series telling the full Ann Arbor story, but thanks for being part of our our efforts to tell the golf side of it all. It's such a cool town. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed your visit, and I hope you do too. 
And there you have a rapid fire look at the incredible golf, the great food, and the tons of fun you can have in the Ann Arbor area. If you've always only thought of this destination as a place to go for, I don't know, let's say a few hours on a Saturday afternoon with 110,000 of your closest friends, now you have some other reasons to visit Ann Arbor. But just in case you could use one more bit of encouragement, let me and my friend Blasty here leave you with these two words. Go blue. I couldn't agree more. We'll see you in Ann Arbor.